So uh, next we are going to look at a uh, uh, topic called transaction processing. So we will see uh, what a transaction is first of all. I think we have uh, we have come across the term transactions at the beginning of the DBMS course also. And uh, transaction is basically a logical unit of data processing that must be completed in its entirety or it should not be completed at all. Okay, so basically transactions means it is a sequence of operations. Say for example, an insert, a delete or an update. A set of operations together form what is a transaction and we have to ensure that uh, it either has to be completed, all the steps involved have to be completed either in its entirety or it should not be completed at all. So this is to ensure correctness of the transaction. Okay. Transactions basically a sequence of steps which have to be either be completed in its entirety or should not be completed at all. And uh, we, we will be talking about transaction processing systems or online, uh, the more common term is OLTP or online transaction processing systems, uh, which involves multiple transactions. Say, for example, or uh, basically it involves hundreds of concurrent users executing at the same time. So examples are airline reservation systems or banking uh, systems and so on where uh, we know uh, say if you're talking about banking system if you want to transfer a certain amount uh, to let us say from my account to your account so it involves deducting the amount from my account and then you have to actually update your account so it is a sequence of steps. Right. So such sort of uh, operations are called transactions and we know when we talk about banking or a line or even railway reservation systems you have millions of users who are actually accessing the system at a time and doing all these operations. Okay, So the issues involved in such sort of systems is what we will be discussing. Now what are the main issues which are involved in such sort of systems? Okay, So here we have to uh, look at how to execute transactions to ensure correctness okay and uh, how to handle transactions more importantly how to handle transactions submitted by multiple users so that is what is important you have millions of users who are accessing the same sort of data or the same sort of system and all these transactions are being executed concurrently or at the same time and we should ensure that these transactions do not interfere with each other and the result should ensure correct data that is when the transfer of a money from my account to your account happens so it has to be correct that is it should it should not happen that uh, the amount is deducted from my account but it is not getting updated in your account such sort of inconsistencies should not happen Another issue which we will be looking at when we will be uh, when we are learning transaction processing is the concept of failure and recovery. Okay, we can have uh, systems failing. Say, for example, we have earlier talked about when you do Google Pay uh, uh, in order to transfer money. Sometimes it might happen that the transactions did, did not happen. A failure occurred, right? Because of maybe it is because of network issues, or it could be because of some error in your system alone, or it could be because of you know the power went off and your um, your. Uh, what is it? Your mobile phone uh, went dead or any sort of failure can happen. So our system uh, uh, should be uh, you know, capable enough to recover from such failures. You also might have noticed in GPA, if at all your uh, account is deducted uh, a certain amount, then it gets transferred to someone else. If midway there is a failure, recovery happens. It gets uh, what your account gets credited at some point in uh, some uh, point in time later on right so that happens so recovery is also essential so mainly we are focusing on when, when we are talking about transaction processing we are talking about correct execute, uh, execution of transactions when millions of users concurrently uh, executing transactions on a system uh, at the same time ensuring correctness that is one issue and the other issue uh, if at all failure occurs how to recover from those failures so these are the major issues we will be dealing with okay so we saw in the last slide that a transaction is actually 
uh, a logical unit of processing and it is an executing program program that forms a logical unit of data processing and we already said it consists of or it consists of one or more data access operation say an insertion operation or deletion operation or update or several say select or retrieval operations and so on all of them so all these steps together make what is a transaction that we already saw right now uh, now if so you can have uh, you must have come across all these terminologies earlier also single user versus multi user systems and if you have a single user system that is in your system if there is only a single user who is working then uh, uh, the issues which we are going to discuss will not arise okay because then you have only single user which is again it is not feasible we know in an airline uh, reservation system we have millions of users who are actually logging into the same machine and uh, the transactions or operations associated with all these users are taking place on the single system okay so single uh, when you have only a single user systems there is not uh, there will not be any conflicts involved and then you don't have a transaction processing concurrency control mechanism at all uh, but generally uh, why we have uh, multi user systems is in order to improve our resource utilization resource in the sense mainly it is the cpu utilization right so when you have multiple users uh, you need multi programming or multi processing systems so multiple processors um, processes are executing on the system at the same time right and that is when the issue arises also okay now so we are saying uh, let us say we have a is uh, one user or one process which is running and b is another process which is running on the same system and so in operating system etc you you must have already come across uh, that um, in order to improve cpu utilization when one process actually is doing some work like say io it is reading from some io device then the cpu is idle so in order to improve C cpu utilization the, uh, the the cpu is actually assigned to some other process so all these things you are already familiar with so that is what uh, we mean by the interleaved model of execution interleaving means um, the different processes are mixing are uh, that is uh, it is not like one process completely executes and then the processor is assigned to another process it is all mixed up okay different processes as and when cpu is free is being assigned to different processes and uh, when you have uh, multiple uh, uh, that is when you have interleaved operation there are there is likely to be issues associated with transaction processing so this is the model which we are going to use for the discussion about transaction processes that is we are assuming interleaved model or interleaved execution of processes and we are not talking about a situation like this here also you have got multiple processes c and d executing on the system but you have multiple cpus also on which it can be assigned so there there is no conflict involved in uh, in the transaction process okay so the model we are talking about is the interleaved model right now before actually going to the issues involved again we'll just get familiar with the terminologies of course we have come across a definition of transaction and we know that transaction involves uh, several database access operations like insertion deletion update etc we have already mentioned this and the database operations that form a transaction can be embedded within an application program so we have uh, i think we mentioned embedded sql etc that is you can embed your sql code within say java or c or any other say php or any other uh, sort of uh, programming language so any when we talk about transactions it is a sequence of operations it might be embedded within an application program or maybe you are directly interactively uh, or interacting say mysql terminal on a mysql terminal you are giving the sequence of operations it could be any of those and uh, there uh, it is likely that is sql support or sql supports the uh, uh, what instructions like begin transaction and end transaction in order to explicitly state where a transaction begins and where a transaction ends within an application program okay and okay okay this also we have to uh, get familiar before we actually move on to the actual uh, 
what the issues involved okay so the database model that is used to represent transaction processing concepts it is not the relational model or the oriented model so in a relational model what we said is any sort of data is represented as relations or tables right so when we are discussing transaction processing uh, basically everything is represented as named data items so every anything which we talk about when we discuss it is for uh, uh, for the discussion we are going to have uh, in uh, related to the transaction processing so anything which we talk about is a set of data items and this data item can have different granularities granularity is a size okay a data item can be a database record or a tuple or it could be a larger unit like a whole disk block or it could be even a smaller unit like a single attribute or a field so basically when we are accessing some data it is uh, we are describing it in terms of data items okay so the transaction processing concepts are independent of the size of the data item or the granularity uh basically we access data items that is a database model we assume when we discuss transaction process right okay so based on this simplified database model another most important database access operations with respect to transactions are read item and write item okay so when we say read item x it means reads a database item named x into a program variable and in order to simplify the notations we assume that the program variable is also named x so we are reading some item in the database and the name of that database item is called x and uh, we are also assuming we are reading that database item on disk onto a variable which resides in memory right which is also named x that is the assumption we are making uh, regarding read item similarly for write item x also writes the value of program variable which resides in memory it's called x into the database item named x so these are two important operations which we will come across so the meaning of this is what we have uh, stated explicitly here okay so what does it mean to say uh, read item x so what happens when we are executing read item x okay so first first what happens is basically we are trying to read some item which might be a, a single attribute or it might be a tuple or it might be a disk block or whatever okay so first of all we have to find the address of the disk block that contains the item x so this is what happens when Uh, we come across a read item x operation within a transaction these are the steps involved first we have to identify the address of the disk block that contains the item x and after that we have to copy that whole disk block into a buffer in main memory so we have already discussed buffer and all those concepts earlier also and we also mentioned that even if you have to sim uh, simply read a single attribute value every uh, database transaction involves a disk block so we first identify the address and then copy the disk block which contains a particular data item and then copy item x from the buffer to the program variable named x so so when we say read item x these three steps are involved okay similarly for when executing write item x what happens so again we have to find the address of the disk block that contains item x this is where we have to write it and then you have to copy the disk block into buffer in main memory so this item x is there in a disk block it has to be brought into main memory and after that copy the item x from the program variable named x into the correct location in the buffer so basically you are writing the site so if you want to write this item Uh, that is a variable named x as we written to a buff, uh, written to the database right so first of all where does x reside in the database and bring it into the uh, buffer and in the buffer you uh, find the variable named x and you write uh, the uh, that is copy item x from variable named x and once that is done the buffer is now updated right now the buffer has to be written on to disk so store the updated disk block from the buffer back to disk okay so this is how you write a variable named x on to disk okay first bring the disk block on to the buffer copy your variable to the buffer and then write the 
uh, uh, the disk block back to disk. Okay, so th this is what happens. Okay, buffer concepts we have already come across. So this is an example of two transactions. Example of T1 is one transaction, T2 is another transaction. So we said transaction means it is a sequence of operations, right? So what happens in this transaction named T1? So first you have to read uh, an item called X. X could be a variable. Uh, in the sense, it could be an attribute, a simple attribute or could be tuple or whatever. Let us assume for simplicity, it is an attribute. Uh, say, let us say we are assuming um, uh, we are, again, as uh, the banking example we have already mentioned, we are transferring some uh, uh, money from my account to your account. Okay. So, first of all, read my account. Read item X, which is my account. And then you are subtracting X is equal to X minus N. You are subtracting some, say, 100 rupees from my account. Now, you are writing back my account onto disk. Okay. You are reading my account value uh, from this updating this and you're writing back the account that is what happens and now in your account also the same operation that is your your account is called y so read that item update the value by it is add 100 rupees to that particular account and write it back all these steps have to be done as a single logical unit and that is why we call it a transaction right so this is an example. Similarly, this is another example where you are reading an item X, you are adding some value M and writing it back. Okay, so these are two examples of transactions. Okay. So we know, now know what a transaction is, what are the operations which happen inside a transaction. So all these concepts we have come across. Now we need to understand why concurrency control is needed. Okay, first of all, what is concurrency control? So we have been talking about transactions. We talked about transaction processing systems or online transaction processing systems. And what we visualized is it is millions of users are logging on to this airline reservation or banking system and uh, transactions are hap happening. And we assume that um, uh, what we say, the model we talked about is interleaved model. Okay, so all these transactions are being executed maybe on the same CPU and uh, it is interleaved. So multiple transactions are happening. So we have say millions of transactions like this executing and within each of these transactions, you can have several steps involved. And if you, uh, you, you uh, all, we already said we cannot uh, uh, exclusively allocate say uh, the CPU to T1 until the whole transaction is executed. You might have to mix them up in order to uh, improve the CPU utilization. All these transactions, all these steps might be interleaved. The operation is interleaved. Say, uh, ah, this is an example. So what happens? So this is transaction T1, which contains one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And this transaction T2 has three steps. So this, when they are in, uh, executed in an interleaved fashion, this is what happens. So this is in time. So first, uh, read item X happens. <coughs> okay, first read item X happens. And uh, like we said earlier, X equals X minus N. The example which we talked about is maybe it is a banking transfer. You are read my account is being deducted with 100 rupees. This happens. Okay. So in the meantime, uh, the CPU is allocated to transaction T2 and it starts executing where again, uh, again, that item is read. Okay. So uh, let us say uh, in this example, initially X is equal to 80. Okay. Initially it is 80 and here X is deducted by uh, say let us uh, n is equal to 5 so x becomes 75 at this point okay now in this read item x again so this is one program this is another program and this x is one variable which resides inside this program which means uh, when you do read item x here again the value read is 80 because we said when you say read item x you are actually reading from disk right so uh, it is 80 here and x is equal to x plus m, m we said it has a value 4, <clears throat> which means this is 84. Okay, right. Now, uh, you are again 
Now, uh, you or CPU switch switches to T1, transaction T1, and it will do a write item X. X is uh, a variable, uh, uh, so let us say an attribute, which is updated with 75 here. Okay. So, on disk, we have a value of 75. Next, we read item Y. Item Y is not very important here because uh, we are talking about variable X being accessed by both transactions T1 and T2. Y is not relevant. Okay, read item Y. And after that, uh, write item X again happens in transaction T2 where it writes 84. Okay. So, what happens is here we got a 75. Here we got an 8. Now, if it were not interleaved at all, Okay, let us say uh, uh, we had this whole transaction executed first and this transaction executed after T1, right? So in that case, we know uh, this would write a 75 onto disk. And after all this is finished, then this transaction would do a read item and read only 75, right? So 75 plus 4 becomes 79 and it would again... So X would be 79 after executing, uh, that is in if T1 is executed first and then T2. Let us say if T2 is executed first, what happens? Uh, it would write an 84 and uh, T1 then uh, will read an 84 and will subtract a 5 to get again 79. Either way, that is if T1 is executed first and then T2 or T2 is executed first and then T1, either way the correct value is only 79. But what we get in, in this interleaved fashion is 84, which means there is an error, right? So the particular error we are talking about is called a lost update. Lost update in the sense this right uh, X as 75 is being overwritten by another right in another transaction. Okay, this is basically because we have interleaved operation and it is working in an uncontrolled fashion. So that is why we need concurrency control. When transactions are executing concurrently, you cannot let them execute in an uncontrolled fashion. Some control mechanism is required. So that is called concurrency control. And if at all concurrency control is not there, we'll have problems. And one of the problems is called the lost update problem. Okay, that is what we have talked about. So another problem which might occur is called a temporary update or dirty read problem. So what happens here is, so again, the same transactions T1 and T2 are executed in a different interleaved fashion here. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the way it is being executed. So first, uh, you read uh, this X and you reduce a value, write it back. And uh, then you uh, read X here, add M and write X and so on. Now, suppose T1 updates data item X. Okay, T1 is updating data item X. And after that, it is read here. But suppose then it fails. If T1 fails, there is an error in this particular transaction. And let us say it fails. So what happens? It fails means uh, then if it fails, T1 is being rolled back. So somewhere in between, we said a transaction has to be executed either in its entirety or not at all. So if there is a failure at this point, what happens is uh, it stops in the middle. So uh, it should not be possible or uh, it should not happen that way. So what happens is if there is a failure, you roll back. Roll back means you undo whatever operations has happened. Okay. So if you undo this, what happens to the item read here? So if I'm if this transaction had written an 80 here, transaction T2 has read an 80, but this is being rolled back. And previously it was 75. Whatever data is being read here is actually wrong, right? So it is called a dirty read. So this is another issue which can happen when we have uncontrolled uh, execute, execution of concurrent transactions. Okay. Another problem is called incorrect uh, summary problem. Okay, incorrect summary problem. So here, uh, uh, like earlier, T1 is the same transaction which we saw in the previous examples, but T3 is a new transaction which is taking a sum of a certain set of variables. Okay, so sum is initially zero. Uh, after that, we'll read A and sum A 
uh, read x, sum x, read y, sum y and so on. But in Intelli with this summing operation, there is another transaction which is going on. And in this transaction here, after sum a and several sum ha have been calculated, here if you look at this, x has been read and you are reducing it by say 100 rupees or some value n and you write it back. Okay. And we know this n has to be updated in y because we are transferring some amount from uh, this account x to y. That is only when it will be in the correct state. But in the meantime, our uh, summation transaction, it will also read x, it will do a sum, it will read y also and take a sum also. But what happens is this n which is subtracted and it is not added here, right? So that the sum will be reduced by value of n. So whatever sum is taken will be wrong. Okay. Okay. So the last problem which we are discussing is called unrepeatable read problem. Uh, so in this, a transaction T reads the same item twice. And then, uh, let us say in between the two reads, it is being changed by transaction T dash. So it will read two different transactions. Say for example, this often happens during an airline reservation transaction. Okay, a customer inquires about a seat availability on several flights. And when then after that, the customer decides on a particular flight. And then the transaction again reads the number of seats on that flight a second time. But in the meantime, someone else has taken, made a booking, right? So which means the number of seats read might be different. So, uh, uh, the transaction might assume uh, that what the earlier that is it has read that there are 100 seats available and uh, we are uh, the user assumes 100 seats are available and so uh, he'll make a booking accordingly but the next time it is being read it is different right it's called an unrepeatable read problem again we need some a mechanism for uh, concurrency control. Concurrency control means when transactions are executing concurrently, multiple millions of transactions executing on the same machine at the same time in an interleave fashion. If it is, if there is no control, errors are likely to occur. So some mechanism for control is required. That is what uh, we are talking about. Okay.